Roll for Crit here at Gen Con 2018. Right now, we are at the Calliope Games booth talking to Bill from Calliope, and uh, we have always felt kind of a, a kinship with you guys because our name is Roll for Crit, and yes. of course you have Roll for It. Roll for It. <laughs> so that, that, that makes us already excited to see what you have there coming you out. Uh, you have some fun new stuff at Gen Con this year. What do you want to start with right now to show off? Sure, we've got four games that will be coming out in the second half of the year. Uh, our first one will be coming out late September, we anticipate, and that is going to be The Mansky Caper. Very cool. Very In The style. Mansky Caper, as you know, Big Al Mansky is the biggest, baddest uh, mobster in Chicago in the 20s and 30s. We are his lieutenants, and we are tired of being disrespected and not getting our fair share. So he's going to be out of town for the weekend. We're going to pay a little visit to his mansion, and we're going to rob the place blind. And whoever gets the most loot is going to be the new head of this little thing of ours. All right. All right. I'm in. That's great. <laughs> now, the problem is Big Al doesn't believe in banks. Uh, he doesn't believe in guards. He believes in dynamite and traps. So he's put all his loot in his safes, and now we're going to go over break into the safes and hope we don't set off a trap and blow ourselves up at the time. So that's the kind of the setup. We're going to head over there, and we're going to play. First all right. of all, I'd like to point out, as with all Calliope games, our games come pre-punched, pre-assembled, ready to play right out of the box. You don't have to put together these awesomely beautiful three-dimensional safes that Big Al keeps his treasure in. They're all ready for you. Love that. We also want to make sure our uh, fans enjoy reading the rules. So in this game, it is a comic book which tells the story of Big Al and his family in the first half. And for all you people who hate pictures, the second half is a regular rule book for those who don't like <laughs> boring i know but you know some people like to read and they don't like to look at beautiful pictures yeah so there you go and then on the back side of that you've got some ads like you would have in comic books for all these great games put oh. out by some company that i'm sure we've heard of <laughs> somebody did those there you go so anyway we're going to go we're going to arrive in our getaway car and then we're going to put out five rooms out of the ten provided face down we're going to choose two to start with and this is going to tell us how many of each of the types of tokens that are inside the safes are there. Because this is a press your luck game. So in this case, we're going to have eight loot tokens, we're going to have two gasp tokens, and we're going to have three danger danger tokens. The loot tokens are going to give you things like keys to open up other rooms, they're going to give you money, and they're going to give you gems. But when you go to the room by yourself and you draw and you get that you know, token that says three gems, you get three gems, That's right? That's good, yeah. But <laughs> if he was standing next to me, I'm not going to be crass and uncouth and take all three. We're, we're buddies, right? we got to split it equally, which means you get one, I get one, and one stays in the room until we find some more to make it an even split. Okay. Make sense? That's fair. Now, if you decide to leave to go do something else, mm -hmm. I'm sure you don't mind that I help myself to whatever's sitting on the floor, right? No, of course not. Let's so, see. it's a pressure luck because you might draw something good. You might draw gasp tokens, and when you draw a gasp token, something interesting happens. Something wonderful or something bad happens. Take a gas card, look at it, you might find some more loot. You might find, uh, it says, everyone's distracted, and you can pick up any loot that's on the floor. Nobody mm -hmm. notices. Or it may say, you feel an earthquake. Add danger, danger tokens to the, to the uh, safes. Who knows what's going to happen? It's some kind of change, some unexpected surprise in the story. Okay. The last choice are the danger, danger tokens. And when you pull one of those, you have now triggered one of Al's traps. What's going to happen? Roll the die. The danger, danger die. You might get a thumbs up means you disarm the trap. Okay. You might get a hand holding a stick of dynamite, which means you blew up and all the loot you've gotten so far, out of here. Yikes. <laughs> you may get a diamond with three, uh, three TNT sticks, which means everyone in the room blew up and all of their stuff is gone. You may get an explosion, which means the entire room is not only you lose everything, but the room is blown up. And when all the rooms are blown up, that's the end of the game. Uh, we count up our money and see who's got the most and that person wins. And the worst of all, you may get Al's picture, which means Al forgot his sunglasses, he's come back to his house. We all talked a big game about how we don't worry about Al, but we're all hiding behind the couch, putting a lampshade on our head, hope he doesn't notice, and everyone in the entire mansion loses their loot. So wow. press your luck. But if you decide to give up a turn and not get more loot, you go back to the getaway car, you stash that loot, and now it's safe for okay. the rest of the game. 
I got it. Now each of us has a special ability. Like Java Joe, he drinks a lot of coffee, moves hands moves fast, he gets to draw two. Nine Lives Nikki, he's a demolition expert. You roll the die, you roll twice and choose the one you want. Okay, that's good, right? But it would be uncouth for you to show off in front of everyone how good you are. Like you want to make me feel bad that you're better? <laughs> so nobody uses their ability for themselves. We all have favor tokens. Because you remember that time a year ago when you did that thing with the guy in the place? I remember. And you said, I need some help and I'll owe you one? Yeah. I got my favorite token, I give it to you, and you have to use your ability for me. Got but it. we only have one, which means that once I use mine, I don't got no more. What do I got to do? Well, hey, Pally, before you roll the die, Maybe you ought to give me a favor and use my ability, eh? <laughs> so the game not only is the pressure luck and the you know who's got the most at the end, but uh -huh. it also has that table play. And I'll tell you, I've never played a, co a, a game of this where people aren't talking like gangsters by the end. It's that kind of game. <laughs> yeah. You're going to have that kind of experience. Hey, 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 Pierre, what's going on here? <laughs> yeah. So that's the Mansky Caper. Runs tw uh, you know 20, 30 minutes up to 50 minutes or so. Uh, it plays two to six players, and uh, it is. A blast. <laughs> that, that's, this is why you have the position you have, that's clearly. Right, yes, I know. <laughs> no, I mean, this is, this is a theme that we love. Uh, it's, there's something about, you know, the heist or, the, or that kind of a thing that's always really fun. And these, as you said, they're just great. Yeah, <laughs> I could absolutely. use these as storage for other things, too. <laughs> there you go. So, yeah, the game does come with ten rooms. Uh, all the bits are in a box, so it comes ready to go, punched and separated. That's all your, your loot. And by the way, Look at these. Ooh. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Those are the, no <laughs> wonder we want to break in, right? <laughs> so yeah. all the you know tokens are ready to go. We've got the stand, uh, standees right here with all the characters. Everyone gets their own little stash bag for their stuff once they, uh, they earn it. And you are good to go and ready to play. Perfect. Awesome. Very cool. And this is available? We are uh, we're anticipating end of September that it's going to be uh, hitting the shelves. Okay. So cool. look for it in your friendly local game store. I don't know about you. Well, actually, I do know about you. <laughs> because, as you know, everybody loves a parade, right? Oh, everybody. Do you love a parade? I love a parade. Camera guy, do you love a parade? <laughs> I love Do you love a parade <laughs> guy next to the camera guy? <laughs> everyone, everyone loves a parade. <laughs> It can't be wrong if it's written it on a box. It says right there. It's a, they so wouldn't wait, lie. What's going to happen is we are all getting ready for our hometown parade. And can I get you to hold that for a second? Oh, absolutely. Hey. So we are going to be building floats. And we are also going to, as we build these floats, are going to be crafting them the way we want them, but the way also that we think the crowd's going to want them. So you'll notice here that this particular group here in front of the sporting goods store, they love the color red and they want to see th red things on the floats. They also love flags, so red flags makes them excited. This group loves yellow flowers and this group loves red balloons. All so, good things. That's it? All good things. All good things. <laughs> so as we go through uh, the game, there's going to be a warehouse that's got these different decoration items that are available to put on your, your floats, okay? So on your turn, and we're gonna do this three times and build our first float, then we'll build a second and a third float. You're gonna take one of these cards and add it to your, to your, uh, to your float. So I'm looking around, I go, well, this is yellow, fla oh, yellow flowers. I add that to my float. If I were to stop right now and add my float to this location, every yellow card scores this many points. So All I get right. five for yellow and I get five for flowers. So right now my float would be worth 10 if it was here. Okay. But if it was here, it would be worth nothing because these people, they don't care about flowers. They want to see flags. So you're kind of crafting it where you want it to go. The other part of the game that you got to kind of keep an eye on is at the beginning of the game, everyone's going to get a, where is it? An order card, which is going to be numbered one through eight. And that's the order in which they will be put out uh, on the streets. So if you get number one, you know you're going to be first. But there's no special ability with number one. If you got number eight, you know you're going to be last, but it's going to let you take an extra card and add it to your float, and you get to take a die and roll it and add it to the location that's there. Okay. So you know you're going to be last, so you kind of are building a float that can go anywhere. But let's say you're number four, and there's four people playing. Are you going to go first, last, in the middle? 
you don't know if it's one, two, three, four, or maybe it's four, six, seven, and eight, and uh. you're going to go first. So you're kind of building it with that idea. I'm not exactly sure I'm going to be in the in the uh, interesting. Crowd. Yeah. So you're trying to optimize your float, and each of these cards, in addition to that, gives you a special ability. Like this one, lets you take a die and flip it to any other side. There'll be a die that lets you add, roll a die and add it to anything. Let's you take a balloon and move it. Let's you, uh, you know, take a die and move it to another location. So you're manipulating the dice. Let's you take two cards from the deck and choose one. So each of these cards decorates your float and gives you a way to manipulate the crowds in the dice to try to optimize your score. Okay, cool. And the cool part is, as you go through the game, you're going to eventually put your little float on the street, and after you finish, you're gonna have a whole bunch of cards with all the crowds and an entire parade of floats That's right the there best. on your table. <laughs> You've got a parade. And to do you enjoy. know why we did that? I I want to take a guess. Because <laughs> many ev people, everybody, no, everyone, everyone loves, loves a parade. Loves a parade. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, I've, I, I'm a little slow, but I get there eventually. <laughs> <You got> there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, that's we. Uh, it's it's always great when there's a game where even if you win or lose, you have a fun little thing to look at. Absolutely, <laughs> you, you made a beautiful tableau <laughs> for everybody to enjoy. That's right. <laughs> so that is everyone loves parade by Mike awesome. Mulvihill. Yeah, now, and that will be. Uh, this is part of our Titans. I was going to ask third year the Wave Three games. Um, we uh, we kickstarted the Titan series, and the idea was we're going to get these epic designers uh, in the industry to create a gateway game featuring a specific mechanic that, they, that they're interested in or love, and then uh, put that out. It had to be uh, for adults, but then an eight-year-old can play, and the adult doesn't have to dumb down you know, his or her play. Um, it's a game that uh, there's going to be stuff going on that the hobby player is going to enjoy, but that the hobby player can bring their friends or their family in and introduce them to you know that mechanic. So that person who says, "Oh, that Seven Wonders, it looks so complicated," and right. you go, "Well, let me show you Eric Lang's Ancestry, which is a tile drafting game." Oh, this is easy, right? Well, now that you've seen that, <laughs> let's add a little more on top and show you something else. Yeah, I love that concept, having that series of different designers you guys are getting. Hive Mind is one that uh, we've really loved a yeah. lot. Richard Garfield. You may have yeah. heard of him. You know, he's done yeah. a thing or two. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fairly big name. Yes. <laughs> Little well, guy. Here we go. Second game uh, that'll be coming out in this wave is Spy Master okay. by Seth Johnson. Now, Seth wanted to do a spy game, but he didn't want to do trench coats and, you know, fog-covered streets in Paris. We're talking about now. We're talking about cyber. We're talking about, you know, kind of the cutting edge of things. So in this game, it's all about you're the guy who's running Intelligence Directive 7 or, you know, whatever your spy organization is. And you're going to be heading around the world to, uh, to take care of all of these missions. So this is not, as you can tell, this is not... Your, 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 your granddaddy's spy game. Modern day technology. Modern day technology. So in this game, you're going to have three agents somewhere in the world. Everyone has three agents. But we're also going to have five uh, freelancers out there. Because okay. none of us have enough, you know, our, our resources aren't so that we can keep people on staff. We've got freelancers and people we can hire for jobs. And they're going to be on here. Now, I said this wasn't your daddy's spy game, right? <laughs> Not my daddy's. These aren't your daddy's agents here. Oh boy. Notice that these are high tech, Woo. super see through acrylic ghost meeples oh, that man. are going to be moving around the world taking care of business. So these right here, these are your freelancers. Very stylish. During the game, you're going to have uh, uh, intelligence cards. And they're right. going to all do different things. They're going to have a number on them and they're going to have an ability, like the, the blueprints, the dossiers, the, uh, you know, the surveillance, and all those kind of things. And you're going to need those to complete the missions that you're going after. Okay. But you also need to move your agents. So you can use the cards to move agents or you can use the cards to accomplish missions. To move, if you're in Asia, for example, it takes one point of movement to move from any city to any other city. But if you need to get an agent from Beijing over to San Francisco, it's going to cost one to go to the airport in Tokyo, it's going to cost one to go to New York, and then it's going to be one more to get to San Francisco. Each of the uh, missions is going to require a certain uh, mix of agents. You need to have two of yours and one freelancer. And you'll be using those points to move your agents into place. Okay. But everyone else is also moving theirs and they can all, anyone can move the neutral agents. You also, in each mission, are going to be required a certain, uh, you know, surveillance or whatever it is. You, you, if you're going to protect the secret jet or you're going to, uh, there's one that was um, uh, 
wipe the computer systems of the gym to get rid of the membership, the gym membership records of your client because he's he's tired of paying those monthly fees or whatever the mission is. Something I can't relate to at all. <laughs> so in that, I'll, I'll take ahead. that for a second. So you're moving around doing these things, and one of the cool things in this game is it's an I uh, uh, I divide you choose game. So we take the dossier of cards, we deal them out one at a time. You're not allowed to reorganize them. You're just dividing them into files, and one of them will be the spy master card. And next round, the spy master will do that job. So I've divided them up: first choice, second choice, third choice, whatever, last choice. Mm -hmm. And then, starting with the spy master, you're going to play movement. And then, if you can accomplish a mission, you do that. There's a stack of mission cards, which means when this mission is done, a new one will pop up. So I'm looking at the board, going, "Well, I can do this mission now, but there is nothing else I can do." So I accomplish it. Next guy goes. Well, when he goes, he takes this mission. Now suddenly, there is a mission that maybe I can do. The next player, he starts moving neutral agents into another place. Suddenly there's agents that I don't have enough cards to manipulate. Now they're in the right place for me. So as a spy master, you are reacting to the situations on the board that are coming in. So on my turn, I may say, you know what, I pass. But when it gets back to me again, now I can act. Okay. So the round ends when everyone passes all the way around in a row. We're going to play five rounds. The person with the most uh, scores from their missions, plus you get bonus points with whatever's left in your hand if you've got the most dossiers, the most blueprints. So the missions are maybe have different amounts of points given out? Correct. The more, the more resources it takes, the more points they're worth, and yeah. you're going to add up your points at the end. So cool. that's Spy Master by Seth Johnson. Yeah. And it is it is a really cool game. It's really just it's neat the way the, the the opportunities keep moving and changing as you're playing the game and it opens up possibilities while it's taking away other possibilities. Yeah, it seems like a very slick design, obviously in the look, but also in the mechanics. It sounds Absolutely. just like yeah. streamlined and not too complicated, but yeah. uh, you know, trying and, to manage everything. Okay. Uh, just yeah. We're not we're not taping right now, right? <laughs> I don't okay, no, think, I think so. we're, we're I think we've, uh, we're, we're off the air. <laughs> That's off. I'm not saying that there is additional missions somewhere in this game. <laughs> because that would that's redacted. <laughs> so off the record, if you get this game, you might want to be thinking inside the box for additional modules and missions that may become available to more experienced okay. spy masters. Okay, very sneaky. There very, you go. We're not going to let that get out anyway. Yeah, okay. Okay, we can go you can turn your camera back <laughs> on right. now. Top secret. That was all they saw was just a camera blur. Oh, that's right. My face was blur. Oh, you know. I can't tell you what it is that I am going to <laughs> Put say. Put you in silhouette. Yeah, yeah, I got to get my that voice change right there. <laughs> Only the highest tech here. There you go. That, you noticed that it was this very high tech vocoder there. We've seen the new Mission Impossible. We've learned all the tricks. I've learned all the tricks. <laughs> all By right. the way, I heard, I, I'm sorry to completely jump, but you know, my it. mind works this way. I don't know if you heard, Tom Cruise, the guy who just did the new Mission Impossible, <laughs> I'm familiar. is as old as Wilford Brimley was when he filmed Cocoon. That's, the man is immortal. <laughs> that is scary thoughts to think that those two guys are the same age in those movies. Yeah, I'm 84, so. <laughs> well, you, you know, you look good for 84. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We've got a game by, we got a, a young up-and-coming designer by the name of Rob Davio. Let's help I this know, guy out. Have you out. heard of him? <laughs> I, it sounds vaguely familiar. I think so. I think he, he may have done a few things here and there. Um, Rob has done a beautiful game for us called Ship Shape. The cool thing about Rob's design, uh, you know, he started in the mass market, and he was doing, right. you know, mass market games. He designs Risk Legacy. He's now doing these massive, epic, beautiful games in the hobby industry. Mm. When we approached him about the Titan series, he was really excited because he said, it's literally the first part of my career and the second part of my career coming together and taking those two skill sets to make the game that marries the two parts of my career. So he yeah. was really excited about being a part of it. That's cool. And what he has come up with is a game of Businessmen in the 1700s who run a ship. Respectable we, we businessmen. We are not pirates. Mm -mm. We are smugglers. Okay. But it is unfair that the king has decided that he's going to put extra taxes on molasses and silk. You know, last week it was cinnamon, now it's molasses and silk, next week it's rum. This is ridiculous that, that we, we can't pass those costs on to our customers. So we're going to bring some contraband in as well as regular goods and and cannons for the military and all of these things. So we are going to be basically loading our ship. Now I want you to, if you would please. Absolutely. 
Think about your ship pulling into the docks. I'm and thinking. sitting on the docks are a pile of crates. Okay. I want those crates. And in each of these crates, you'll notice three different barrels. You've got cannons are black, gold is gold as the yellow gold, and then purple is the contraband. It always adds up to eight. Now we are going to be sending out our our um, uh, our crew, and we're each are going to have a deck of ten cards numbered one through ten, from the least competent guy <laughs> all the way up, you know, to like the captain of the ship. And she is very smart, and she is very clever, and she's going to be able to negotiate for us the the the, the best one. So we're okay. each going to take a card, put it face down in front of us. One, two, three, reveal, and whoever has the highest value gets the top one, and we work our way down. Now, I can see exactly what the top is. Below that, I can see it in this case. The next one, I can see one of these, and I know that's a six, which means that the other two are gonna be worth zero or one. So the farther down it goes, the harder it is to see what's in that stack of cargo. The person who gets the top one is gonna set it either way in any direction on top of their cargo hold for their ship. Okay. And then as you continue on, you're gonna be able to Build, but you're only going to score the visible. So, for example, uh, if I were to put it this way, it's good. But let's say I don't want to get rid of that, so I now I'm covering it with this. So I can build my my ship in any way I want. And then the third one, boom. So now nice. I that's my first voyage, and I'm going to score it. The first thing we look at is on your on your hold on the board you have. There are going to be some rats that are worth negative points because okay. no one wants to open their their ship up and see rats. Not pleasant. Up. Then we're going to score all the gold. Next, we look at the cannons. Everyone adds up their cannons. Whoever's got the least cannons gets nothing. Everyone else subtracts their number, the loser's number, from your cannons, and you score that much. So if you had 10, I had 5, he has 2. He gets nothing. 5 minus 2 is 3. 10 minus 2 is 8. Okay. You, so that's money that you get. And the last one is contraband. So this guy here has 7 showing. This one here has 6 showing. Whereas cannons, the lowest gets nothing. Whoever has the most contraband, the king's agents catch you, Ooh. you get nothing, <laughs> and everyone else gets the full value of their contraband. Uh. So I'm sitting there going, oh my gosh, I got 12, I'm in trouble. Someone else gets one with an eight, and suddenly they got 15, <laughs> and I pushed my luck, it. and I, it paid <laughs> off. So, you know, everyone's getting molasses for Christmas because I got a whole bunch in for free at the, you know, at the port today. Count up our money, Let's get set for the second round, the third round, whoever's money after the three voyages is the winner of the game. I love this design. It's unlike anything I've seen because yeah. it's got that actual, you know, kind of that toy feel to it. Where we're actually loading crates onto our ship to, to create the holds and we, it's the puzzle aspect of it and, and you know, whatnot. But it's, it's thinky, but it's not brain burning. It's challenging because we're bidding and, you know, if I, if, if I didn't mention it, if we get a tie, we both drop out and everyone keeps going and then we do a second round of bidding. So there's going to be some strategy. I want this, but I, you know, I want the third one down. But then, how high do I bid? Because if I bid too high, I won't. But if I bid too low, someone else bids the same. So it gives you those kind of really cool choices. At the same time, it's it's this tactile, fun. You know, I'm I'm filling my ship's hold. Yeah, the the, the tactile nature of it, being able yep. to look down and see things, is. Absolutely. Very appealing. Yep. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. So design. that's what Rob's come up with. We are really excited. Yeah. These games are going to be, uh, we're coming out at, uh, at the end of the year in quarter four. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, I think I think we're going to have some really, really fun games for people to take a look at. Yeah, these all sound great. Always excited to look at your upcoming games and whatever future Titan series games you have coming out. Thank you so much for no showing problem. us everything. Thanks for coming by. Hope you're having a good show at we Gen Con indeed. this year. Yeah, uh, and this is Roll for Crit. Like and subscribe for more Gen Con 2018 coverage. And enter our contest for a chance to win some Gen Con games in the description down below.